Hey folks, Bill here with Whirly Bird Video, continuing the build on the Hobby King X666 quad. I'm ready to hook up the electronics, uh, so I'm going to put the speed controls together and uh, solder the connection for the battery so that I can put all four speed control positives and negatives together and create a pigtail in the center of the quad so that I can plug up one battery connection. I've had some folks ask me specifically how to do that and I found some great places on the internet that show great pictures on how to do it. Uh, but I thought I'd do a uh, video of uh, how I do it. So we'll take a look at that and uh, hopefully it'll help you out. Okay, we're going to solder the four speed control wires together and then we're going to solder the wire that's going to our battery connector. Now I'm using the wires I've pre-cut here so this is a simulation. Normally you know your speed control is going to be attached to this wire so this would be the positive lead coming off of your uh, speed control. So I've got four wires here that are uh, small wire. This is, a, about, this is the same wire that would come off of your speed control. This here is 16 gauge wire. And then I've got this uh, wire that's uh, a, a 12 gauge wire that uh, will be on my power connector. So I would be soldering my XT60. Since I like XT60s for up to 60 amp stuff, I use the XT60s. I would be putting that on this end, this end of the uh, wire. So I've stripped a few of these, but anyway, what you want to do is you want to strip the wires all the same and, and strip quite a bit of wire. Don't be afraid to uh, strip off some wire off of your speed control power supply. Uh, connection. So you want to make them all about the same. Uh, that way you're uh, dealing with the same amount of wire. When you get that stripped like that, go ahead and twist that. And you should be able to make that look pretty good as I'm twisting with my hand and then pulling up with my finger uh, toward the end of the wire to make a nice uh, spun connection. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, one way you can do it is actually put these wires together and take a smaller uh, solid wire and wrap around this connection. So you could take all four of these wires, put this one in the middle, and then take some solid wire and wrap around them. Notice I said you could do that. I don't have any solid stranded wire in the shop today so I'm just going to sort of these the other way I know how. So this is flux. Uh, I use a couple different kinds of flux. This is paste flux. I also use a liquid-based uh, flux. And most of the time I use the liquid-based flux when I'm putting the, uh, the EC5 or the XT60 on the end of my wire. I'll use uh, a liquid flux inside the terminals of the bullet connections. But on uh, wires, I generally use the paste flux. I have a third here, hand here that I use. So basically what I want to do is tin up the wires, get a little bit on the uh, soldering iron. Don't be afraid of heat on soldering iron. I mean you don't want to melt your battery connections of course, but a good uh, hot solder joint is what we want. Cold solder joints are bad connections so we don't want that usually two to three seconds and you should see that sort of wick into the wire. So I'm going to do each one of these. A little bit of flux on each one. Actually that's quite a bit but it will run off.
bigger wire you got to use more heat and I'm touching that sorter to the iron but uh, mostly I'm running it into the uh, actual wire instead of the iron I can wipe off any excess flux that I got on these wires there'll still be a little bit on them which is good because we have to sort them together so just so I don't get it all over me wipe it a little bit off and then what I'll do is uh, I'll take my four ESC cords so these are my simulated ESC cords and since I've got four I'm actually going to make a little cube and I'm going to zip tie them together Now we'll be using heat shrink with this, so you got to make sure you've got the right size heat shrink. This is actually a little bit big, but I'll put it on for the simulation. It should be just a little bit smaller than this. But this will need to be up on your four wires or up on your power wire in advance, so don't forget that. Since I've got open-ended, it's no big deal, but if your uh, power connection is already on your positive end, don't forget that. So i got those zipped together pretty tight there. They're holding pretty good. And what I want to do next is actually take the power wire and go in the little cube. And I'm going to zip tie that together. Here's where the wire would really help if I had some wire to uh, sort of together, but I'm going to go as far as I can out on the end of these wires so that I can get it, stay away from the heat as long as I can because the plastic zip tie, of course, is going to start to melt on me. Now, once I've got it here, at this point where I would use a liquid flux, um, or the paste flux. I'm going to use paste because that's what most folks have, but the liquid flux is it's a water-based flux. Uh, you can look it up in McMaster Car. You can get it by the quart pretty cheap and it'll last you forever. Or any of the railroad guys that uh, sorter connections, you can get it from any of the railroad places. It's an easy, clean flux that's water-based. So once you get that there, I'm going to start the heat up on a couple of the wires and then let that sorter wick in. And now I'm in between them. And I'll just continue to keep wicking that in. And I'll let that cool. And then I'll go all the way around like that, making my connection between the center power cord and my ESC cords. And you can see I'm really putting a lot of the sorter in there. You should see it eventually come up there where it starts filling in the gap around those wires. See that? Blowing it there, let it cool, and then I'm just going to turn it around. I'm going to keep going around that wire, filling all those gaps, and again, plenty of heat and a wire. See, I'm not even touching the iron at that point, I'm actually letting that wick right down in there so that it's making sure it's getting into that center power cord. Actually looks pretty good all the way around. I think gravity's helped me out there a little. So that's cool now, or cooler. The sorter is setting for me. You can go ahead and just pull your uh, zip ties off, or snip them off.
So now you have that pretty good clean connection. I mean you want to make sure that all of your sorter is wicked in to all the cords and then the center. That's still really hot. The insulation's discolored still so. But it's a good strong connection. Now you can use braided wire. Uh, this stuff's pretty cool. It makes some really cool looking connections. I usually do that to go all the way in between the power connection and my speed control if you're going to see it on my helicopters and stuff to make them look nice. In this case you can also use just a little bit of heat shrink. You can uh, go with smaller up on this end a little ways and then uh, that in the middle to make a tighter connection. Like I said this is, this is a little bit too big but just for simulation sake. On your uh, heat shrink, you just want to go around and evenly heat the shrink and allow it to heat on all sides. You can see that's shrinking up pretty good. So really where it's big is on this end. And what I normally would have done is took another piece of heat shrink that was smaller in there. And let that get, make that end a little bigger. But you can see that makes a pretty good joint. So if you can imagine your speed controls are all hooked to this end. And your power connections now at this end. Using the larger wire for the power connection allows the four smaller wires to share the current load. So going from uh, the 16 gauge to a 12 gauge is uh, probably fine for these are 25 amp speed controls. So I'll be pulling a ton through it and I think the 12 uh, gauge will handle it fine but you could go up to a 10 if you wanted. Of course if you go with a 10 you're going to have to go with an EC5 connector because the XT60s won't really fit that uh, tin in there very well unless you kind of snip off a few wires. So hopefully that helps and of course if you had six for you folks building hexcopters or octocopters you would just put more wires together. In a six I would put one on this side and one on that side to make a circle and then the same deal. So I hope that soldering tip helps you there. Put your uh, speed controls together when you're working on multi-rotor aircraft or really anything that involves hooking multiple wires into one. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's not that hard to do. Uh, again, that, that technique makes it look pretty good. If you want to get a little tighter, you can actually, instead of using the zip ties, you can go around that with some solid wire that will help hold that together and you can pull that really tight. Uh, you can do that actually before you wick in that sorter into each wire and actually even get a tighter connection if you were trying to get into a small place. Uh, but that makes a pretty good connection. Um, you won't have any problems as far as uh, cold sorter joints and that kind of thing as long as you let that heat really get in there and let that sorter wick into the wires. You should see it flowing just like uh, water into those. Uh, if, if it's doing that, you've got it hot enough. And of course the wire should be nice and shiny when you're done. If it's a really dull looking color, uh, you're either using a silver solder that you're not getting hot enough or a lead based solder that you're not getting hot enough. Uh, silver solder will definitely turn dull if you don't get it hot enough. So lead solder is really okay. I usually use a mix and I usually use some sort of uh, uh, solid. I don't really use a flux core sorter because I use external flux like the paste and the liquid. So I'll put the uh, links down in the bottom of where I get uh, the liquid flux, or at least the name of it. Uh, I, like I said, I get uh, mine from McMaster Car and buy it by the quart, but you can buy it in a couple ounce jars from the hobby shops and that sort of thing. That's the exact same stuff. If you don't use as much as I do, I use it a lot. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Uh, this is in the series of building the Hobby King X666 uh, quadcopter. Uh, you look for more of that to come really soon. I am getting really close once I get all the electronics done, get out and get this uh, test flight. I'll start breaking down those videos, but I wanted to do the sorter video really quick because I had a friend of mine say, hey Bill, how do you do that? Because he's building one right now and I wanted to get that done and out of the way as quick as possible so that he could see it and he could get his done too. So thanks for watching. Please rate, big thumbs up, subscribe, like us on Facebook, uh, check us out on Twitter. Uh, we're trying to get our page views up. We need all the help we can get. We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time on Whirly Bird Video.